Here's Frank, Scott, Chris, and Adam. The Blue Jays needed a frontline starter, and they got their guy. Welcome into an emergency edition of Fantasy Baseball today on Friday, July 30th. Frank Stanfield joined once again by Scott White. Jose Barrios traded to the Toronto Blue Jays in exchange for a great prospect mm-hmm. haul. Shortstop slash outfielder Austin Martin, former first round pick from 2020, and starting pitcher Simeon Woods Richardson head head back on over to the Minnesota Twins. Let's start with the Jose Barrios side of this, Scott. And he's having another great season, 3.48 ERA, 1.04 whip, legit workhorse. He has the seventh most innings pitched since the start of 2018. With all that being said, I do think this is a negative park shift for him going from Target Field to Rogers Center. Now they are back in Toronto, and it is a tough division. So what do you think about this move for Jose Barrios? Well, it's interesting because you describe Barrios as a frontline starting pitcher. And I, I feel like there's been a debate raging in, in fantasy baseball for basically his whole career, whether he's even that. I, I mean, his numbers are solid. They've, they've been regularly solid. But the 348 ERA he has now is a career best. The 104 whip he has right now is a career best the 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 best he had previously was 114 he's never had 10 strikeouts per nine innings i mean the main thing he does well is consistently go six seven innings which certainly has value but if those ratios you know those those ratios are right at the border of it of being helpful and hurtful you know uh, over that number of innings uh and What's really helped Jose Barrios, too, is pitching in such a neutral environment. Target fields maybe lean slightly toward pitchers, but it's, it, it's one of the fairer venues, I would say. And now he goes to Toronto, which is always favored hitters. And in fact, the entire AL East, uh, with, with the exception of Tampa Bay, the AL East is, is mostly, those parks are mostly built for home runs. It is the, in, in terms of, venues it is the division that's most most uh most skewed toward hitting and specifically home runs and brios isn't like an extreme fly ball pitcher but he's not a ground ball pitcher and so you take his moderate strikeout rates that he's always had because never again never 10k per nine with his you know moderate fly ball rates he's had in, in his past, in, in what we would consider good years for Jose Barrios, he's had a, a 451 XFIT before, a 432 XFIT before, a 428 XFIT before. Always outperformed it with the ERA, of course. But is that going to happen now that he's going to a division full of hitters' parks? I guess is my concern. Or is he going to go from being this mid three ZRA guy, and really historically it's been more like a high three ZRA guy, to a low four ZRA guy? Because if that happens, well, then he's certainly not a frontline pitcher, right? And in in fantasy, he may be, you know, not much of an asset anymore. So yeah. I, I have some concern. I have some concerns. I wouldn't describe it as like severe alarm, but I have moderate concerns about this. Uh, this kind of, I think, ruining is too strong, but this severely, uh, severely impairing. Barrios's value. Yeah, it definitely affects him. And look, he's not a frontline starter for fantasy purposes. He's always been on the border of low end SP2, high end SP3, and that's fine. You're right. Like he's more of an accumulator than anything else. But the Blue Jays, they just needed someone that can give them quality depth, right? Outside of Hyunjin Ryu, which they don't really have. Robbie Ray has been awesome this season, but we'll see if he can obviously continue with that production. According to Sackcast, Back in 2019, so the Blue Jays have not played in Rogers Center in Toronto since 2019. According to StatCast, Rogers Center ranked first in home run park factors. Target field was 26th. So I don't want to poo-poo this too much, but there is a real possibility that this hurts Jose Barrios's fantasy value moving forward. And he is under team control through next season, so he will be with the Blue Jays for 2022 
as well. Let's talk about some of the prospects here that they get in return, that the Twins get in return. Austin Martin, a top 20 overall prospect in baseball, first round pick in 2020. As I mentioned, he was the fifth overall pick. And some people regarded him as the second best player in that draft behind Spencer yep. Torkelson. Yep. At double A this season, 281 batting average, only two homers, nine st steals. The power has been underwhelming, but a 424 OBP. Power, again, not there, Scott, but I, I kind of just yeah. think he has it for some reason. It, I, I, he just has like this it factor, Austin Martin. Well, it doesn't seem like evaluators have been turned off by the lack of power this year. And it was, in a way, kind of expected. I don't think quite to this degree. But the power was the part of his skill set that was kind of behind, specifically on the offensive end, kind of behind the rest. And power is so easy to cultivate. Um, I, I think even with the environment changes in baseball this year, it's just if a hitting prospect is lacking power, that's the thing I worry about least. And the fact that Austin Martin is so good, like uh, unbelievably good at managing the count. Like I, 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 I still think the ceiling is very high here and I consensus top 20 prospect basically. Uh, so, you know, I'm not, I'm not out of line in saying that. Uh, I've, I've compared him to Anthony Rendon in the past. That That's kind of the offensive upside I could see Austin Martin having. And, you know, he's capable of playing a lot of positions. Center field, shortstop is what he's played most in the minors. But, you know, maybe he winds up at third base. He could, it could be, we, we don't really, he could be somebody who ends up with a lot of versatility when he gets to the majors too. So, as a dynasty asset, Art Austin Martin's great. Certainly as a major league asset, Austin Martin's great. I never imagined the Blue Jays would trade him for anything, uh, much less a guy who may not be so suited for for them. Uh, it, it, you know, obviously they need innings and they need they need innings covered. But as I pointed out, it may not be the best environment for his particular skill set. So very surprising to see that. And then it's it's not like they stopped there. They also traded Simeon Woods Richardson, who was a consensus top 100 prospect coming into the year. He's also been underwhelming at double A, 576 ERA, 1-5 whip. But, you know, plenty of strikeouts. Um, good stuff. I, I don't... I, I don't hear a lot about how his stock has fallen, really, in the eyes of evaluators either. I'm sure, I don't know. Maybe maybe it wouldn't have been included if he didn't have bad numbers at AA. I don't know. But I, I still consider him one of the best pitching prospects in baseball. And uh, the Twins got him back too for a year and a half of Barrios. I mean, I, I think they, I hesitate to say they did even better than the Marlins did in that Starling Marte de deal because that was literally just two months of Marte for somebody who's semi-proven in the majors already. Yeah, I, I, I don't think this quite measures up to that, but it is it is a really good return, much better than I expected for Boreas. Yeah, great return here for the Minnesota Twins. Take notes, Washington. Not that I want to beat up on Washington too much, right? They lost Max Scherzer, Trey Turner, and Russell Westbrook all in the same day. But, man, like, I don't know. This, this seems like a great package based on uh, what Ho Jose Barrios has done in his career compared to what... Obviously, Max Scherzer and Trey Turner are going to do for the Los Angeles Dodgers. By the way, if you're a Twins fan, I know, you know, it's it kind of sucks. Like, whatever, you're going through a rebuild, but there's a lot to be excited about with all the young pitching prospects and just prospects in general that they have on their team. Between Jordan Belazovich, Yuan Duran, Matt Cantorino, I know he's dealing with an injury, but they get Joe Ryan from the Rays and now Simeon's, Simeon Wood, Woods Richardson, Austin Martin. It's, it's an exciting time for the Twins farm system. We did have some... Smaller trains, Scott, here regarding your Atlanta Braves. They acquired both Eddie Rosario and Adam Duvall to help boost their outfield. Rosario straight up for Pablo Sandoval. I I don't know what's going on there. <laughs> I don't know. It's so okay, weird. Okay, so Cleveland's packing it in, so they trade for an aging pinch hitter. I, um, <laughs> like I would say, it's as, it's it's as naked a salary dump as I've ever seen, trading Eddie Rosario for Pablo Sandoval, but... Rosario's salary is $8 million this year. I guess he's already been paid about half of that, right? That would make sense. And they sent cash considerations to the Braves. So how much money are they even saving? <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. Now, Rosario's been bad this year. Uh, 
he's he's always been a low OPS guy because he just walks so infrequently. But 685 OPS, usually, you know, he's around 800. Has been better the past two months, at least in terms. He's, he's hitting for average again. Uh, not really sure where the power's gone. But, you know... I, I, I don't know, like pretty much stock even for him. I, I think he's better than he's shown so far. If he does bounce back, I don't I wouldn't credit it to him going to the Braves. I just think it he was due to bounce back anyway. Uh so so that's the same. Uh Adam Duvall. Did you did you mention that one or are we doing this one at a time? Adam Duvall. Go ahead. Yeah. He's sixty four percent rostered. He's got twenty two homers on the season. And one among the NL leaders in RBI, which is just bonkers. He and Jesus Aguilar both, even though the Marlins' are, offense is terrible. They they were driving in all the runs there, I guess. Um, Yeah, we've already seen how Adam Duvall does in the Braves' environment. It's it's better. It's better than the Marlins' environment. Like, Adam Duvall, you look at his splits home and away, which is often true for Marlins hitters since they opened that stadium. Definitely better on the road. Let me pull those up here. So at home this year, Adam Duvall's hit 199 with a 629 OPS on the road, 259 with an 877 OPS. So getting him out of Miami can only help. That said, he's been around long enough that we we know what he basically is. Batting average between 230 and 250 with a low OBP and a lot of homers. So you know, I, I don't I, I think his value improves going to the Braves. I don't think it's like, oh my gosh, if he's available in your league, you gotta run out and pick him up now. There's clearly there are clearly limitations to what Adam Duval can provide. I think the most interesting angle here with the two Braves outfield acquisitions, having just acquired Jock Peterson a couple weeks ago. So that's a brand new outfield, right? Who's the center fielder? They yeah, all have they all, all they've all gotten a little bit of exposure to center field, but none of them is a center fielder, and I'm not sure. I'm not sure that's going to be the greatest thing for the pitching staff. Um, Adam Duvall is a surprisingly good defender in the outfield. I kind of hope he ends up being the one who goes to center field. I think the worst choice would be Jock Peterson, actually. Uh, but I, it, it also kind of makes me wonder if that's going to cut into their playing time just to get like Guillermo Heredia in there just for, for defensive purposes and making the occasional start still. I don't know. Yeah, no, that's definitely possible. And a good point that you bring up. Eddie Rosario, by the way, still a few weeks away. He's on the IL with abdominal and oblique injuries. So he's an absolute butcher in the outfield. He's not going to be in center field. So they'll figure that out, hopefully. But potential for losing playing time with some of those Braves outfielders. All right. We're going to wrap up for Scott and Frank. Thank you all for listening and watching Fantasy Baseball today. We're probably going to be back later on. Bye-bye.